Welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today I thought we'd have a look at some software for one of my favourite devices and one of the first devices I owned, the Series 5. So this is my top 10 list of Series 5 applications. You may or may not agree, feel free to leave comments below. So the first application we're going to look at is Clock 5. So instead of squinting at the little clock in the corner when you wake up, you can see this. It comes with a few nice functions. So we'll just have a quick look through. So you can set a password if you wish. You can send it to the background. It's got a voice time function. It's a bit glitchy if you try and set it from the menu, but why would you do that? Um, and then you can en enable chimes, so every 15 minutes it'll chime at you. And there's an alarm section, so you can set various alarms. In addition to that, you can alter the display, so that instead of seeing seconds, you can see minutes and the time and day. You can set it to an analog clock, either big or small, and it bounces around the screen a bit like a screensaver. And then there's a ton of other screensaver options on here. And down at the bottom, we can set a logo to bounce around, and you can choose various logos to have do that. There's a polygon screensaver. In addition, we've got a count up and a countdown timer. Very handy, and these aren't built into the system, so very useful to have. And we've got world time. You can either have two, two zones, or you can in fact have multiple zones. which is very handy again. There's also a calendar so that you can have the time and the month up. A couple of other useful things. So we've got night clock, which allows you to set a timer for the backlight. So if you are using this as a nighttime clock, the backlight will come on between these hours, but not the rest of the time. Very useful because obviously it's dark at night. There's also sweet dreams. This allows you to set it to either um, speak the time, beep the time, or flash the LED to tell you the time when power is on. You can set it to come on between certain times, or you can set it to be always active. So I'll just set it to always active, and I'll show you what it does. Time is and then it goes back to sleep. If you interrupt it by tapping the screen, it stops it. I don't think I'd want it talking to me in the middle of the night but you can. There's a few other program options, and we can set the 12 or 24 hour clock, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, pretty standard stuff. And then you can actually invert the digital view. So if we go back to the clock, and there you are, you can have a dark background if you choose. Clock 5 was originally freeware, so it's still available for free. There's no need to register it or anything like that. So next up, as a really handy note-taking application, is Sticker. So this does a lot more than you imagine. We're just going to change some settings first of all. So we're going to go to the Start bar, and we're going to go Other and Preferences, because we want to change the application appearance, because I'd like it to not be transparent in the background, just make it easier to show you what it does. But as you can see, we can set it to go to the foreground at Power On, and we can show battery warnings. You can have a sound effect when you turn it on, and you can schedule a backlight like you can in Clock 5. You can pop some LCD contrast buttons up if you wish. Uh, you can hide the status bar at the bottom if you wish. And you can auto save, which is always a good idea. There is a mini task bar at the left side. I tend not to use this as I use other applications for the tasks, so we'll get rid of that. There's a mini calculator as well, which I'll leave on the left so you can see it. But obviously there is quick access to a calculator in ePocket itself. So there's a couple of other settings here, backlight, LCD contrast, and how big you want your default stickers to be. So we'll make them medium, why not? And we'll put the time and date on, and of course we want a shadow, why wouldn't we? You can set a hotkey to bring it to the foreground, which is always useful, and because if you've got it running in the background, you can bring it straight up and pop a note on. There's an idle timer, so if it's on so long, it'll drop to the background. It's currently 10 seconds, let's make it 20, why not? And we'll come out the menu. So down at the bottom, we've got a couple of indicators. We've got the memory um, level for the card slot and the internal RAM. We've got a battery indicator. We've got whether the link is on or not, which it currently is. So we'll create a new sticker. So the stickers are text-based. They've got a couple of options. So obviously we can put a title.
and it creates a sticker. So we've set the time and there's a little bit of a shadow, it looks quite nice. Once you're in this, you can make it bigger or smaller. You can minimize them and you can just alter the style as well. So you can have change the background color. We've got a couple of options there. We can make the text bold. We can change the text color. When it's selected, pressing the zoom buttons makes it bigger or smaller. So pretty easy to use. You'll have noticed there's a couple of other options here. So we have one called Other. And this allows you to create different types of stickers. So if you've created a picture, for example, I've just done this one as a pumpkin. Um, we'll just title it. And then you can set that as a picture, uh, to, which you can drag around as a sticker. Same as you can with the others. And again, you can zoom in and zoom out. Under others, there's also a calendar view. So if there's a specific month you want, you can leave that calendar up like that. You can create more than one. So if you had a couple of months you wanted, you can have two or three up there. There's a data view. It's a little bit finickety. You have to set the data file up correctly, um, but you can essentially have a data view that floats around and you can scroll through them. And um, you can't really search it, which is a shame. And last but not least, there is a clock view. So you can choose the title. You can set how many hours different there is, how many minutes, hit confirm and up it pops. And again, just like before, you can zoom in and out. Hitting the menu button, you can change it to digital if you prefer. So if that's not enough for you, you can also add a draw sticker. This allows you to take a very quick note. So you just draw on the screen like you would in Sketch. Confirm, give it a title if you want crops it and pops it on your screen. So if you wrote down a phone number or something like that, this is a real quick way of saving it. When you select a sticker, there's an edit button, should you wish to edit them. And if you head down into the menu options and hit view, you've got a couple of other options. You can cascade your stickers or you can stack them up and you can align them. Sadly, you can't get them to go back to where you'd left them before. But I think you'll agree, this is quite a powerful program for quick note taking on your Scion. I would strongly recommend it. It is shareware and um, you do need to register it. It'll activate for 30 days. Otherwise, um, there's a couple of options. If you can find a registration key online, you can obviously register it, um, but you can't buy it anymore. And um, the other option is if you do go into the system file and delete the any file, um, which is created on startup, it'll let you use it for another 30 days. So one of the most useful things for your Scion is PDF print. Obviously, you also want a PDF reader, um, but PDF print allows you essentially to um, print any document into PDF format, which makes it compatible with other computers. So you can simply copy it over from your flashcard. This saves messing about with Scion trying to convert things. It works really well. So all you do is when you've completed your project, you go to print, choose your printer, and we're going to use the PDF printer and print. So here's our Word document as a PDF. You can add uh, any subjects or authors or bits and bobs. So pretty much anything you want. So I've also got a PDF reader installed, obviously, otherwise your PDFs aren't much use. And as you can see, we've maintained the formatting and the embedded objects. So very useful to share documents with other people directly via the compact flashcard. Speaking of conversion, I would strongly recommend you get and convert by Nuon. So unfortunately, the Nuon website, which had been rehosted by somebody else, recently went down. There was available on there and there were registration codes available on there. It is now very difficult to register, but it's a very useful program. Essentially, you can convert documents without the need for SciWin or another computer. This is very useful. Again, as I've mentioned before, Windows 10 isn't great for running SciWin. So these are all the different things that you can convert. There isn't a way to pay for registration anymore. It wasn't released as abandoned web, but as I say, unfortunately the new one website is currently down. I'm hoping it will go back up. I've put a link to it below and we'll see whether it comes back or not. So although the keyboard is excellent on the Scion, it's not lit and the backlight doesn't throw enough light on it. So Night Keys, again by Nuon, is a very useful piece of software because it pops a virtual keyboard up. So this means that in the dark, 
you can still add to your documents, type things up, etc, etc. By tapping on the keyboard, you can move it around by holding this key. You can also resize it using this button. And you can bring up a menu by tapping on this blank space. This lets you hide it, i.e. pop it to the background, there's a help, there's an exit, and it just tells you a little bit about it. So very useful should you need to use it in the dark to write a quick memo or something like that. Unless, of course, you simply draw on the screen using sticker. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Next up on my must-have items is RMR Zip. So this is a very straightforward zip program for zipping and unzipping files and obviously it's very useful for saving space. So we'll create a new one. We're going to use the standard zip and we'll create it in the C drive. Now it asks us to add some things. So I've created a folder here for it to zip. If this was the registered version, you'd be able to tap this button and add all the files from that folder. This software is currently still available to register. RMR website is still up, and so if you are using it, I would encourage you to register it. Also, they have some other good software that you might want. So there's a couple of options. We can include the subfolders to the archive. You can save the folder info, which allows you to unzip it back to original folders. And you can put a file comment, an archive comment, and then we've got the option to move the files, encrypt the files, and how much compression we want. So we'll use the maximum compression, why not? And we're going to compress that picture. There we are, so it's added to the archive. If we now go add, it'll take us back to that folder, and we can just select the next one in the list and add it to the file. And there we have it. Very straightforward. It also writes the zips to the registry so that it will open automatically when tapped on a zip file. And there we have it. So by far and away, the most powerful application launcher is Extras Bars. So this takes over the extras down in the bottom corner, but it allows you to create links to documents. You can create links to macros. You can create links to programs, uh, all run by hotkeys. So it's very powerful indeed. So we'll just whiz through this. Scan to the applications and we're all set up. We're going to evaluate it. Again, Extras Bars is abandoned where you'll be able to find a fully registered version online. So here we are with our first bar. So we're going to add a program. So Control and A. As you can see, we can add an application, a document, a website, a folder, a macro, a clip text, template, extras bar, or a key press. So you can link your extras bars one to another. So we're going to add an application first of all. Takes us to the list of applications. So let's do PDF. And we can remove it from the real extras bar if we wish. And this saves space on the extras bar for other items. This tells us we've got the option of editing it later, and there it is. So currently, the modifier for the extras bar is control. So when we press control and extras bar, that's what we get. So let's add a document. There we are. So any important documents or applications you can put on your extras bar. You can then create new extras bars. So if we go to menu, tap on extras bar, and we can add a new one. So once you've created this, you can assign a new hotkey for it. So for example, we might want this one to be M for more. And that's done. So now that hotkey brings up this extras bar. So you can see that if you had a lot of applications, you could file them under categories, you could have productivity, office, blah, blah, you could have frequently used documents. As I say, Extras Bar can also handle macros, which can be very useful for automating tasks, but it's too much to go into in this video. Of course, the sign isn't all about work. It's about play too. So here's the Sinclair emulator released by Palmtop, who later became TomTom. This allows you to run 
original ZX80 games on your Scion. So let's open a game and take a look. So first we need to load it. And here we are. So this emulator will emulate a joystick. Um, as you can see, it's set up. You can map the pen or you can use the arrow keys or both. You can have the space to fire or tab to fire. So you've got a couple of options there. There's also some sound options. It's currently off. Let's pop it on. And we've got a couple of display options in terms of screen size. So we can have it normal. We can have it large and show status and border. And colors allows you to rotate between four and 16 grays as well as a couple of other view options, but we'll stick with that. You can move the emulator faster or slower using the buttons on the side, because if it is running too fast, it can make it difficult to play. And of course, there's plenty of classic games out there that you might want to play on your Scion. So just a quick reminder that the 20th of October is actually the one year anniversary of handheld computing. And because of that, I'm doing a little bit of a giveaway with one of these. It also includes a slip-in case for it, and a travel adapter sync pack. I did say there'd be a cradle, but unfortunately that's not going to happen as the one I've got isn't working. However, there's everything you need here to get connected to Windows 10. And I will include a disc containing a legitimate version of Outlook 2002 for you to synchronise with. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next video and the competition. There are lots of other games available. I would strongly recommend SimCity. It runs very well on a black and white screen. And there is a colour patch if you've got the Series 7. Scrolling around can be done with keys. You've got your various build options. And you can have all the usual monsters attack and everything else. It is the full version of the game. By far and away my favourite game for the Scion is No Man's Land by Great Ape Software. This was released as Abandonware a few years ago and is available for the full version online. It's essentially a real-time strategy game with tanks, so you can choose your side and you choose your campaign and you can choose your difficulty level. And when you're ready, let's go. So it's quite a straightforward game to play. We basically need to build an oil well. And you simply select and move your tanks. So here's an oil well. So let's build one. Once you've selected it, out comes your vehicle to build your oil well. Your oil well creates money, your money creates tanks. Very straightforward. There's also a level editor on this, so you can create custom games. Essentially, you can create as many levels as you like and make them as difficult as you want. Word of warning, if you make your level too big, it does grind to a halt. So that's my top 10. Uh, legitimately, there is 11 because PDF Print and the PDF Viewer are separate programs, but they kind of go together. Perhaps you have a favourite programme or you feel like my list is incomplete or there are some things you would have preferred to see on it. Pop a comment below, I love a bit of feedback. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to watch my anniversary video on the 20th of October when we'll have a little bit of a look back at some of the things we've reviewed so far. My name's Hugh, this is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.